In this lesson, we're going to learn about advanced contact management. Advanced contact management means, yes, you can create contacts to remember people's names, phone numbers, email addresses, but we have a lot more there that we can do. If you're going to forward out your card or someone else's card, you can actually create an electric business card, and in the electronic business card, forward that one out instead. You can also manage some of the advanced contact options and really how you want to display and organize the contacts. We can forward them out to people who need that contact information and if you're going to get a new machine or use a new mail system, we can also export them out so that we can import them into the new account. Topic A, editing an electronic business card. In this topic, we have a chance to use the Edit Business Card dialog box to take one contact record and instead of it just being a contact record, essentially design it so it looks exactly like the business card that they would hand out. So in order to edit a business card, you can open up the contact, you can go into Edit Business Card, and it allows you to literally use an image designer to make it look exactly the way you want. Now we can do this both for display purposes on a card by card basis, or maybe you want to forward out your bosses, your coworkers, or a salesperson's business card, you can design it to look like the one they would hand out. So just pointing out here, notice the top field is full name. Notice that top field is full name here as well. So these are the fields in the order that they appear you will see that we have company and then a blank line. So there's the company and there's the blank line. So what you see on the top is what you're building down here at the bottom. If you decide that right here you want something else, maybe you want their title in example, then all we need to do is to basically insert or use that particular field. And notice down here under fields we can add, we can go pick title, It'll land wherever it lands, click on it, and then use the up or down buttons to move it up or down in the list until it's utilizing the blank line that you're trying to fill in. So let's just pick on the name at this point. We have Dean, that's his full name. So when you click on full name, it just shows you a preview at the top left. That's all that is, is preview. And notice here we can edit what that says. Notice here we have a bold button. I can make the font bigger, I can make it smaller, italic, underline, we have left, right, center, and I can even change the color. So all of that is an option because full name is clicked, so edit is everything right now for full name. If I decide that I want the email address to be italic, then I would click on email and then of course I would make it italic. Once you've positioned all of the fields in the order that you want them to appear, and again, remember, this is just a preview, you can then go ahead and look at the card design itself. So maybe we want an image, and that image is most likely a company logo. So you can browse for that image file, and once you browse for it, you can tell it, do you want this at the top, if you want it at the bottom. So it's just going to give you a quick layout of where that image is going to be, what percentage is of the card will be dedicated to the image, and how do you want to align it. In this case, it fits to an edge. In this demonstration, we're going to learn how to edit an electronic business card. Now, we are currently under people with our contacts, and we have a list of contacts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up a contact and create it as a business card. Now let's go ahead first and see what the business card view buys us. And notice the name is in bold, the number and any link is in blue, and the rest of it is in dark gray. So what I would like to do is I would actually like to navigate around and, and really make some decisions on how this is going to look. So let's go ahead and pick on one of these. We'll choose Brent and he's got his address information in there. So here under Brent what we're going to start to do is we're going to edit the business card itself. We're going to do this by using options. Click on business card. Notice it brings up his address in a whole different way. And I'd like you to notice that we have all the fields down here. So on the fields, we can go ahead and take our blank lines. 
We can add blank lines. We can remove the blank lines. We can also move items up and down. So in example, if I decide that I want the home phone to be a little higher, I can click and I can put it right there below his title. I can also move it down to the bottom of the business card. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in an email address. So when I hit add and I go to email, we're going to add email one. And again, I'm going to go ahead and move this up or down in the list so that I can decide where it's going to be. Now notice here we have no label, but I can certainly put a label in this particular case on the left. And the label might be email. And notice it appears right here. Now what we also have is on the layout where any images might appear. We can change this to go find an image. So here you'll see that we have in fact found some samples or some logos. We can add any one of these images we want. I'm going to go ahead and put a logo image on there and notice it appears. So now that's our image right, our image left. We can send it to the right, the top, the bottom, anything that we want and notice we now have what looks like an actual business card. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on OK and notice the email address is missing. And as I type in the email address and I move along, you'll see it actually appears right here on the business card. When you're all done, we can save and close that contact. Topic B, advanced contact options. We're going to take a look at some of the advanced options under people for all your contact records as well as the options for the Outlook Social Connector. In your Outlook options, one of the first things that we can find, and again, I guess to back up where we got here, is going to Backstage Menu of File and then Options. And we're going to pick right here on People. This is how we're going to work with our contacts. So people can tend to be very specific. Uh, full name order, is the full name going to be last name, first name, or first name, last name? And file under what the default is going to be when you create new contact records. Also, whether or not you want to check for duplicates when saving new contacts. And if it finds a duplicate, it does allow you to merge the information. Do we want to create an index? So we're going to show an additional index, and we can go ahead and index it in uh, other languages. Also, whether or not you care about the online status and photographs. So next to the name, if you were to get an email from me, there's this little bar, and it's in color. So if it happens to notice that I'm online, this little block of color might be green. Or if I'm out of the office, it might be a different color. So this is what we're talking about. And if you really look at all the emails, you'll see different colors. And a lot of times, it'll either be grayed out or green. So do we want to see the status? If they happen to have photographs available, do we want to see them? And if you're just turning that on now for the first time or turning it off, you will have to restart Outlook. And do we only want to see names in the people peak, requiring, again, um, Outlook? And this is when you click down here at the bottom under People. And when I click, I can search quickly for someone's number without leaving the email or whatever context I'm in within Outlook. Outlook has built in a social connector. We've built in Facebook, LinkedIn, SharePoint, and pretty much any other social network you can find. Now, what happens with the social connector is when you get an email from someone, down at the very bottom of the email message, you may notice what's called the people pane. And it has um, little icons, what would represent people.
So if you were to get an email from me and I went ahead or I got it from you and I had gone ahead and connected it to the social accounts, meaning yes, I'd put in username and passwords to all of this, I would be able to see all your Facebook posts, all your LinkedIn posts, anything that you've done in SharePoint. So it would connect me out to all the other sites that you happen to be working within. In this demonstration, we're going to learn how to create a contact group. Now, in order to do this, I am, in fact, on People, and we're going to start on the Home tab in the new group to create a new contact group. I'm going to go ahead and call this Product Marketing. And then now I have a choice to add some members. So let's go ahead and add some members. We'll add them from our Outlook contacts. I'm going to use my Shift key to highlight a few. We'll add them into Members and simply click on OK. When we're all done, we can go ahead and save and close our group. Now, if we move through, you're going to see under Product Marketing, this is going to be our group. So it doesn't list all the information. It just simply tells you it's a group. Now, if you do want to use that, to email, you simply go to the Mail tab into New Email, and I'm going to start this to Product Marketing. And you'll see it works just fine. Now, if you ever want to see what's in a distribution group that you've created, all you have to do is click on the plus sign, and it will expand on them. Now, do notice, once you expand on the list, Outlook replaces the list with its members, and we won't be able to collapse it down again. So if this is going to be a giant group with 100 members, you're about to fill up your screen. But just notice, here, all of it is in there. Also notice we have our auto text. Some of the contacts I have in there are fictional. And notice right here, it tells you that there are certain addresses that are no longer valid. But for now, just to show you you can use your group, I'm going to close the message and not save it. Topic C, Forward Contacts. In this topic, we get a chance to look at the couple of different formats that we have if we're going to forward contact information to someone else with an email. So let's say someone calls you and would like, in this case, Dean's contact information. If I was to open up Dean's contact record under People, I would see under Contact, we have something called Forward. I could forward it as a business card if I had taken the time to dress up that contact record and create a business card. We can do Internet Format, which is more of a very standard format across all mail systems. It's called a V-card. It's been around forever. Or is an Outlook contact if they also use Outlook. Now, if it's an Outlook contact, all they need to do is when they receive the email, double click on this, it'll show up as an attachment, and they hit save and close, and it automatically saves it right there into their contact records. Sometimes you need to share contact information with other people in your organization. So in this demonstration, we'll learn how to forward contacts. So what we're going to do is we are right here in our contacts group on the Home tab, and you'll see that we have a grouping called Share. Now, all we need to do is find the contact that we wish to share and forward the contact. Notice you could forward as a business card, like I've created right here for Brent, or as a standard Outlook contact. We're going to go ahead and forward the full business card, and let's send it over to Oscar. If you do want to forward the contact as a standard contact, this is just to show you that it looks a little bit different because it simply has the attached contact file. Topic D, exporting contacts. Many times we have an ability to change mail systems. So maybe we're going from an ISP to Office 365. Or maybe we've been using an ISP like our Comcast or a Verizon address, and it's time to integrate with a real company email. Regardless, we can go ahead and export these contacts so they can be imported somewhere else. If you're to export your contacts, we basically have two main formats to pick from. One of them is a comma-separated value. It's also known as a CSV file. 
or we have a PST file, which is, I will put it right here, Outlook only. So let's say you want a list of contacts so you can dump them into an Excel spreadsheet for whatever reason. Or you're going over to a new mail system that's not Microsoft based. Maybe you're going over to Lotus Notes. Whatever it is, you need this information outside of Outlook. You can go ahead and export it to a CSV, which is a very global format that almost every system in the world can accept. Even if you were to export them out to, let's say, an Access database, it doesn't matter. But if you're exporting them as a backup, or if you're exporting them because you're changing machines and you want your contacts on the new machines, as long as you're going Outlook to Outlook, you can export out to a PST file, which Outlook uses quite a bit for everything from contacts to calendar to the emails themselves. In this demonstration, we're going to learn how to export our contacts. Now, sometimes we're exporting because we're moving to a new mail system, but sometimes we're exporting because we might want the list to use for something like a mail merge. So what we're going to do is we are in the People workspace, and I would like to go to the File menu where I'm going to find Open and Export. Now, we'd like to export this over into Excel, so notice we'll go to Import and Export. We want to export this to a file. Notice this can be a comma-separated value or a PST file. PST is native to Outlook, so we're going to stick with comma-separated. I'll choose Contacts. We get to list the file that we're exporting to. and click on OK, and then we'll let it do its work. Now if we were to navigate out into our documents, you'll see Exported Contacts in Microsoft Excel, and if we double click, it'll open it up within Excel. In this lesson, we get a chance to look at some advanced contact management. We edited an electric business card, it's so that the view is a little bit better and also to give us something more professional to forward out as someone requests contacts. We also managed the advanced contact options for each contact, forwarded them out to other users, and got a chance to see how to export them so we could use our contact list somewhere else.